and welcome to today's Healthy Marriage. I'm your host, Charlene Lammers, Executive Director for Great Marriages for Sheboygan County. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, John Light. He's the Chief Operating Officer for Like Furniture, a single father, raising a family, and running a business. Hi, John, welcome to today's show. Thanks, thanks, thanks so for much having for me. being our guest. Pleasure. So, you're a single dad, raising a family, running a business. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been on my own as a single dad for about seven years. Uh, it was uh, a period of time, a big transition for us in our company. Uh, in work, uh, our, our business was transitioning over to Asia. Uh, the doors were opened up to uh, free trade into mm -hmm. the U.S. from wherever. Uh, so that was a big change going on. And at that time, uh, I had gone through a divorce. And uh, it was a challenging uh, time of my life. And I guess why I'm sitting here sharing the story is because I went through a lot. Uh, whether you own your own business, you're working for somebody else, you're left on your own to raise children, how do you balance that all? Um, I've learned some things, um, and you know, hopefully I can, can share them. Uh, not always easy. But uh, overall, things have really worked out. And I'll tell you that when faith became a more important part of my life, that really made things improve. You know, it's a unique struggle for the man to be the one raising the family. Yes. Yeah. I don't even know another single father. <laughs> There's a lot of single mothers, but not another single father that I've met. So that was a lot of unique challenges for you. Yes, but, but it was okay. You know, my ex-wife and I talked about this. I think the fact that we had three boys, uh, that the boys were better off with me. And, you know, I, th I think that would be hard, you know, if those, that role was reversed mm -hmm. and having a woman have to, to take care of three boys. So it's worked out. It was a good decision. Uh, the boys are doing well. Um, they're fine. So how old are your boys? 17, 20, and 23. So it was, they, they were, some were teenagers when this began. Yes. I think that's a particularly difficult time uh, to go through a divorce, mm -hmm. a separation and divorce during those, those critical years, especially when they're reaching adolescent age. You know, emotions run high. They saw their world turned upside down it literally turned overnight for them. Um, they didn't see this coming, um, and it just blindsided them. And I think the hardest, the one who took it the hardest was my oldest son, Stephen. He was 16 at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that was uh, a challenge because he, he was uh, um, going through uh, a period where there were some other neighbors that were going through the same thing that we were right next door to us, and they had children about our age, a son of that same age. And I think they saw what was happening in these perfect little families, and it was all you know, blowing up on them. So I think he took it kind of hard. Um, through, the, through the years now, he's 23 now, uh, he's really come come around and has grown up to be a wonderful young man uh, who's very responsible and uh, it kind of surprised me a little bit that after what he had all gone through that he can still come through with faith with his head screwed on straight I'm extremely proud of him so you know you can make it it, it, it is you know no matter how difficult it can be if you have faith and realize that we're not just living in this world, that there's something more and beyond this, 
anyone can, can make it, no matter how difficult. How long yeah. were you married? 21 years. We see that in our office, you know, 21 years, is, there are seven stages to marriage and that's one of the second most times that we start seeing people in the office is between 18 and 32 years. As the children start reaching that time when you're, they're considering leaving the nest, you know, it can, it can be very challenging. Uh, I never thought of it that way. I just thought after 21 years, I'm in this for good, yes. you know. Uh, it just, I didn't see it coming. That's why divorce is so much harder with couples who've been married that long. That's a long time because you think by then you've got it figured out. Yeah, you, you've become stable, you mm -hmm. know. You have your little home and your, you know, everything. You've got your plan and put in place for um, how you're uh, going to live out your life. You become comfortable. And uh, at that point, it, it's hard. One of the biggest things you, in a long marriage like that will be finance, mm -hmm. you know, because you have your nest egg and now you're carving it all up and you're starting all over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it makes it hard, but um, it, it's, it's really not about, it, it's not about the money and the things that you acquired. Um, in fact, I th towards the end of the marriage, I think we found ourselves consuming more than what we probably should have been. You try to make up for maybe the love of love lost with things to try to buy you happiness in this world. And it doesn't work in you know, a mm -hmm. nice shiny new car or maybe having a nice new house, you know, and you find yourself just, you know, getting caught up in that cycle, trying to replace something that's myth missing inside. So, 21 years, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a hard time to, to go through it. Mm -hmm. But looking back, if there's one thing I could say that could have improved the marriage, and certainly on my, on my side too, I mean, it takes two, mm -hmm. but communication. Mm -hmm. um, I really didn't understand how important communication is. Life changes. That's the one thing we can count on. And then how do we respond to those changes? And the only way you can with your partner is to be able to talk to one another. Get eye to eye and just share what is going on and how we're changing and the difficulties that we have and how we're going to respond to them. One of the comments that you made was that the boys didn't see it coming and it kind of just happened for them overnight. Pretty that, much. That we find that to be common with a lot of the couples because like you said, that communication is lacking. So the children are not hearing that dialogue, they're not knowing there's a problem, they're not seeing you work it out or you know, they're not privy to what's going on. No, they shouldn't always be either, right? But that, when you're having that communication, then you have a chance to work on what the problem is and, and potentially resolve it. And, and so a lot of what we find ourselves at Great Marriage is doing it, are teaching communication school, skills because pretty much every couple who comes into us, even if they have a good marriage, they probably need to brush up on communication skills and make them a little stronger to know when there's some kind of um, unhappiness or, or somebody's not feeling loved or there's some kind of issue that needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what was the biggest challenge that you had to make going from being married dad you know, to a single father running a household? Oh gosh, I had to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, I was doing all the laundry and the cooking and the cleaning. Uh, and uh, 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 Doreen, my ex-wife, was in a, in a, an amazing mother from this point of view. I mean, she just like would really take care of that household. Mm -hmm. And now I had to do this all. Oh, and uh, I had to change, you know, my life. There was really no me time at all. That all disappeared. So there was no time for the gym. There was no time for hanging out with buddies. There was none of that. Um, you know, if I got up in the morning and I had to get kids ready for school and get them out, uh, then get off to work, take care of business, and get back home and start it all over again. So just having it all thrown at me very quickly uh, 
was difficult, mm -hmm. but it made me a better cook. <laughs> Did you find that the end of your relationship and going through the divorce affected you at work? Oh yeah. Yeah, there was a, it was a hard time, but you know, I've got, you know, a loving family. Mm -hmm. um, dad was around yet and mom and my, my brother and sister and my partners in business. Uh, they were there and very supportive of me. But could I see that in my performance? Absolutely. You know, you can't get that out of your mind. And, you know, it's not just me. It's, you know, I've had so many employees over the years that have gone through a similar situation. And we would just talk in my office. And I know what they were going through. Uh, and you just have to be patient. Um, this too will pass, but when you're in the middle of it, it seems like the, the world is ending and nothing is as it was. And, you know, I was just another one going through that. Maybe all the same stories I heard before, but now I was living it. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it's just a common thread. Uh, there's always uh, some reasons why it happened, but it just did happen. And uh, you just have to find a way to fight through it. Mm -hmm. um, my, my best advice <laughs> to my employees and to myself was just, despite of what's happening, you know, try to focus on the work the best you can. Do the best you can with it. You know, because if you keep your mind occupied, that's okay. Get through the work day and then go home with the children and, and do the best job you can there. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that you, know, you were fortunate to have your family with you at work to support you as you were going through the process and to be patient with you and loving with you when you needed it. How much harder, or what do you think that's like for a person who has to go to work who does not have that family support, that patience, that, that love and care that they need? Oh gosh, I can't even imagine. Um, I'm blessed you know, to have you know, I was born and raised in this area, so I have my family. But you know, imagine yourself coming from the outside and, and maybe moving in here where you don't have all that family structure you can lean on. Well, you can have your friends. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. And when I went through this, I found out who my real friends were. Because a real friend will never judge you. A real friend will be there and listen and help you and guide you. Um, so I, it, it's hard for me to imagine not having that family around me, but if you don't, that makes it all the more difficult and probably all the more reason why they may want a mentoring program like Great Marriages. Mm -hmm. um, might be a good starting point. Do you find that perhaps you are a better boss to those couples or those people who are going through this situation at work? That it has allowed you to have a different perspective because we, you know, statistics show that when there is a divorce or severe problems in the relationship, it, it can affect work productivity for up to three years. You know, do you find that this has enabled you to maybe be more patient or understanding or in any way help somebody at work who may be going through this after you went through sure, it Sure, I think you'd be, you, you have empathy, at, you know, mm -hmm. you, you understand, you know, what people are going through. Um, three years though, productivity loss, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I would hope it's not that, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, actually my, my separation was somewhat long. It went on for almost a couple of years, so maybe that statistic is not too far off. That's what it's talking about from the time the relationship fails to the time after the divorce. You know, during that time, the relationship is failing, you're separating, you're divorcing, you are divorced, you're coping with getting used to your new life after the divorce. So that statistic incorporates, you know, all of that. Sure, I I can see that, mm -hmm. but you have a job to do. You still have to do it. I mean, you, is it going to pop up in the middle of your day and, and and bother you? If it if it's coming up that frequently, then you probably need to talk to somebody. Um, everyone has a job to do. You can't mm -hmm. just roll over and and say, oh, woe is me, you still have to, you know, you get up the next day, you have a bad day, you go to sleep, you get up the next day, and you do it all over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what you have to do. I mean, no matter what job you have. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is kind of a tough society, you know, it, it's not easy. 
And there may be people that are not that empathetic about your situation, that are very results driven. So you have to do your work. Um, will you be on your top of your game every day? Of course not. But if you get a couple good days, you know, in there, and then maybe a few good days, and it grows. Yeah. So you, you have to do it. There's no choice about the matter. Yeah, statistics show also that health-related costs, you know, are increased during this time because of stress-related illness. And did you find any of that was the case with you? Uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, probably the biggest thing is I didn't get to hit the gym as much as I did and watch my, my physical health. Um, mm -hmm. I had to give that up. That was the first thing that, that went. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have that time for myself. But no, health-related, no, not that I saw physical. Mentally, I suppose we all you know, get, some, um, get some stress from that. Does it shorten us, our life? Probably a little bit. Um, I went during the separation uh, and divorce, I, I did go through some therapy and I met a wonderful guy that really helped guide me through, that helped me get my, my feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. But, you know, right at the time that I was going through the divorce, uh, you, you were, you know, founding great marriages, a mentoring program like that could have been really good. But, you know, I gave it a try um, and it did help me somewhat because you you do feel it, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't always sleep very well, you do worry, um, you, you get scared, mm -hmm. you know, what's my life going to be like, um, you know, for me it's how am I going to survive this onslaught of, uh, of foreign goods coming in the country, how am I going to possibly raise these three boys by myself? It's kind of scary, mm -hmm. um, but um, I just prioritized. Um, how, my how did you prioritize? How did, how did you prioritize your time and balance it between the kids and work and everything that you had to do all by yourself? Well, clearly, truly, children come first. Mm -hmm. Faith comes first. Faith, faith in God, faith in Jesus. Uh, that's what's going to strengthen me to do the right things with my children. But I had to balance, you know, the workload. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm fortunate, you know, I'm self-employed with a, a good family structure around me that can, can, can work with my strange schedule. You know, you know, I still have to go to soccer games. I still need to be present in, in all the things in my children's lives. How do I do that? You know, I, I had, it, was, it was just very supportive that I had my family. So I, I guess the, um, you know, the, the, the transition was easier for me than what it might be for, for someone else. Um, it just was okay. Um, not easy, but it was okay. Do you think if there, you know, Great Marriage has been around seven and a half years, do you think if there was a organization or if it was more prevalent and you knew about it at the time, because that was about, we were just kind of starting when you were, you know, divorcing, but if there had been something there that you could have turned to, would you have turned to it? Could it have helped you? Oh, sure. If I would have saw your billboard, you bet I would have been on that. <laughs> your billboard's like right across from my business. I'd seen it pop up there. Oh. Sure, of course. I would have yeah. you know, looked at any opportunity to get some sort of assistance, mm -hmm. guidance, mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, it, yes, it uh, would certainly have been there. And you know, from, from what I uh, now know about great marriages, uh, you're really growing and making a difference in many people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big demand out there for, for help. Mm -hmm. I think we've got this lost generation, these baby boomer generation. What I have seen in dysfunctional families and divorce, it's, it's beyond anything I would have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Raised the way that I was, you know, with mom and dad, loving family, never imagined all this. And, you know, when I was my children's age going through that divorce, I didn't know anybody that was going through divorce. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody that was facing these kind of problems. So we've got this whole generation of, of boomers that uh, have been unable 
to make these marriages work for whatever reason. So there's a great challenge, you know, for our kids. You know, it's really going to be up to our kids to turn this around, that you really can do this, that you don't have to have fear of marriage, that you can enter into a lifetime commitment with a partner, and it should be beautiful, and it should be, it should last. It can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and with, uh, uh, I know I keep saying this, but, you know, with faith, anything can happen. Mountains can be moved. Do you, so, you still believe in marriage then? You, you believe in... Sure. Of yeah. course I do. Yeah. You know, would I love to have, have it happen to me? Sure. Of course I would. Would things change, you know? Um, if, um, if I'm blessed, of course. You know, I want my three boys to fall in love. Mm -hmm. I want them to find that partner in life that they can go to their deathbeds with. I mean, that's kind of what I had in my mind. I know it can be done. There's a lot of successful marriages that are out there. You know, so sure, I've got great faith for my kids to do that. I want them to do that. Yeah. That was my question. My next question is, what do you want for your children, for your boys, for their relationships, for their marriages? And, and how can and you answer that already? How, how can you help them? Because all marriages, you will struggle. So if they someday get married, and like you said, hopefully you, you believe they will or you want them to, they will have struggles. All marriages do. So how can you help them or what advice do you think that you could give them or other people to help their children? Because you're right, our culture is shifting mm -hmm. away from it. How, how do we bring it back? How do we you know, solidify the importance of the foundation of the family in our society, in our community? Live by example. You know, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, you have to, you can say the right things, but you really need to do the right things. So I, I, I try for my boys is try to lead my life with a good example. Um, I have chosen how I live my life, um, how it, we conduct ourselves in our home and on the outside. And hopefully that rubs off on them. Um, you know, that, I think that is, is really it. I mean, just, they're going to see what you do every day, you know. What are the kind of things we talk about when I get them alone and we have dinner together? And uh, they start to have their relationships now, mm -hmm. you know. Being 17, my, my, my middle, my, my youngest son doesn't have a girlfriend yet, that's okay. Um, but my middle son, Patrick, uh, he has a wonderful girlfriend, and so it's nice to be able to have dialogue you know, now about, about their relationships. I want to help, you know. And I see good things going on in all my kids' lives. Um, I'm actually a little surprised how well they have come around after what they've been through just seven years ago. So they're, uh, I think they're pretty balanced, but you, you really have to set a good example at home. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, be stable. Um, don't be drifting um, from one um, one place to another. Um, it's it's difficult after you go through a divorce because you don't want to be alone. You want to be loved again, mm -hmm. and you want to love. And so it's you have this desire for it. So you have to be a little bit careful and be patient, and somehow bring stability. <laughs> through this all, that you don't take your children through even a further rocky road mm -hmm. um, by by jumping into relationships that have not been thought through, um, that you are not sure of the direction that they're going. So I think patience, answering your question, is just I try to teach my kids patience and you know pay attention, um, you know, and if they do that. Um, Usually the truth is revealed in any kind of relationship that they might be entering into. I think that you can speak to the success with the stability of your kids and, and how they're adjusted and how they're doing okay now to your conscious effort to make that the case for them, to be that kind of example that they need to be a good, decent, moral person, you know, trying to go about your daily life the best way that you know how. And what would 
it look like if you were to be in a serious relationship? And at what point do you think you would allow the boys to come into that and to know about it and be a part of it? That's a really good question. Because uh, our goal <coughs> is that people would think about that ahead of time. So it wouldn't be reactionary, you know, like, oh, I'm in this relationship, you bring the boys, and then later on it doesn't work out, and you say, well, I probably shouldn't have done that. Or to your point, you do it too soon. You know, it has to be a conscious choice that this is now a good time and this is why I'm going to do it. Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to, to, to patience, and sometimes you just have to, you know, guard the children too, mm -hmm. you know. I'm just like a, a big papa bear, you know, and you have to, you know, kind of keep them guarded from all that stuff. They don't need to, to know, oh, I met some girl or whatever, and, you know, this is all wonderful, and you, you just can't drift in and out of those things, you know, as much as what you want to. You do have to insulate your children somewhat from what you're going through, the emotional ups and downs of, of wanting to find love, too. Uh, Make it clear in your own mind first where you're going mm -hmm. before you break that to your kids. Uh, make sure that it, it's, it's worth it. Also, I, I think I have, I've talked to, to, to many people, a lot of women, a lot of women are pretty smart here, is that they, they know that those children come first and they will put off that relationship till further in life till the children are old enough, they're mature enough to understand it. Now, that, that may not be for everybody, but that's kind of the path that I have gone down. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I have not, you know, uh, I have not uh, jumped, you know, into those kind of relationships and br brought women into my home or anything like that. It can happen different ways for different people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were just so fortunate that the stars aligned and you found the right person in your life, my goodness, you know, go for it. You do. But it doesn't hurt to have some patience and protect the kids. Um, you know, and if, if that means that you have to, to uh, keep things on the down low for a while, that's what you do until you're sure. We talk about that when, you know, you're single after a divorce and you're dating again to date with a purpose, you know, to, to be purposeful in your dating and, and to not just get into a relationship too quickly, too soon, too fast, with, especially with certain circumstances where you perhaps have a live-in boyfriend or a live-in girlfriend and the children are present in the home to be conscious of that always. Yeah, that would be challenging. Yeah. Um, I've not gone down that road. Mm. Um, I w that would scare me a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you know, I came from a, a different place. Uh, you know, raised a Roman Catholic. You just didn't do that. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and, you know, we're going to have to leave it at that for today mm -hmm. because we're out of time. Okay. But it's been wonderful having you on my show. Thank you so much for joining us today on Healthy Marriages. And thank you, Charlene. I appreciate uh, you having me here to uh, share my story. And thank you for joining us on Healthy Marriage. Check out our website for upcoming events. Remember, marriage, it does matter. <laughs>